<laughs> You'll be fine. Seems a girl at my place has gotten into some trouble lately. Trouble? Is the fastener on her corset getting stuck or something? I wouldn't mind open that. If only it was that simple. Looks like a lot of prisoners were released from a prison camp in Siberia recently. Did you hear about that? Poor guys. Can't believe there's guys who've been stuck away from home longer than me. Anyway, that girl's ex-boyfriend apparently got repatriated and came home. He keeps pestering her for money. So much that's really troubling her. Fuck off, dude. I see, then I guess that means I'm up. You're just the driver. I can handle any sort of pimp you throw at me by myself. Jeez, men are really hopeless, aren't they? You gotta drink to get by. Driving drunk can't be good, though. <laughs> Alcohol's my blood. If I don't drink, I'll shrivel up and die. Oh, stop at that corner here. Her apartment's close. You know, you could have told me like four seconds ago. You sure you don't want me to come? Didn't I tell you already? I only wanted you as a driver. Well, see for yourself. I'll come back after I've pinked some men's cheeks. In this utterly transformed Tokyo, there should be no greater fortune than running into an old friend. However, in this mad age, even the wonderful luck isn't always a good thing. Yeah, if that person's a fucking piece of shit garbage. Please don't ask me again, please. Don't say that. Without your support, how are we supposed to eat? The men violently snatched the large water bill as the girl was holding out. I get a job. I'm working myself to death. <laughs> Even though all you do is flirt with American soldiers. I'm doing it as a job. I do it because I want to be able to eat. We put our lives on the line fighting for this country. Yeah, and now she's putting her life on the line to fucking not die. Yeah, we get nothing in return. All women have to do is spread it and make a killing. Like it's fucking easy? You don't think she fucking hates her job? I don't care how good the fucking money is. You're being objectified. You're being turned into a literal fucking sex object. Is that really going to be fun? Stop talking like that. It's natural that you won't get money if you don't work. Shut the fuck up. We men saw hell and got nothing for it, while you women just sat all snug in Japan and got fat. Huh. Okay. And we're ju and just where am I supposed to work? There's no way I'm going into the army again. Also, a fucking problem is, your own culture was like, no, nah, you can't get a real fucking job. So, of fucking course, when it collapses, that's the only job available to them in the first place. Stop it. Let me go. Can't we just get along like old times? Can't, can't we? Stop it. We're already over. G oh, who are you? What are you doing? You know, the thing is, though, like, even in fucking, like, 2012, the fucking messages in this are literally one-to-one -one today. That's crazy. It's been, like, eight years already. And still the fucking same. Crazy shit, man. You're the worst kind of man. All you do is extort money, and no now you resort to violence? Meryl... Just leave the rest to me, okay? I'll whip this pimp's attitude into shape. He's not even a fucking pimp. He's just a douchebag. What do you say? You think you fucking can? You want to know about me? Fuck this dude. Marrow's the real fucking pimp. I mean, she kind of is, though. She's a female pimp. Thank you. I appreciate that shot. If you learn anything from this, you'll never come back again. You little bitch. Hey, what's up? What's going on here? Got a headache from this hangover. Can't you keep it down for a bit? One after the other, several men came out of our house. Each uh, one stank of alcohol. What was our friend of you girls? What the heck? They're all living here? He said they were friends and brought them all to live here. I see. So they really are cockroaches. What's that? We're war buddies. Brother who made it through hell. You women all safe and snug in Japan, you'd have no way of understanding. Not my problem. If you want money, why don't you try working? Not fulfilling your duty to work? Extorting money off a woman? You're worse than cockroaches. You're a cheeky old girly, aren't you? I think I've taken a liking to this one. 
So you look pretty all dolled up like that. You're earning cash, right? Why don't you make, give me a little something? Yeah, sure. I'll give it to you. My fist, that is. Though, um, uh, looks like there's just a few more people here than I expected. Seems you got confidence in your strength, and there's not much you can do against this many, huh? Leo, you want to be hung out to dry, and or are you going to apologize and hand over whatever you got on you? Or do you like to smooth, soothe our war-wounded hearts with that body of yours? <laughs> Meryl, run. Fine, run, what happened to you? Running is something I can't do. If we're talking about the hells we lived through, there's no way I, Meryl Tanashi, am going to lose to the likes of you. You know, if you really look, she's actually kind of pretty, ain't she? We're going to make you regret being born a woman. Yeah, fuck off. What? Who the hell are you? Just a passing taxing driver. Uh, have any orders, miss? Perfect timing. Could you make a quick trick to the hospital? These guys look like they need help. Anything for you, miss. Fuck. I would not want to get hit by a bottle from her, though. Fuck. Fucking time. Time keeps getting shorter. Piece of shit. So fucking thick. She's great. Sorry, Stella. But uh, she's the best one. Good enough, whatever. Got it. Next time you look at it, so much as look at this girl, you'll be feeding the fish in Tokyo Bay. Okay? We'll remember this. Hey, wait for me! <laughs> How pathetic. Running with their tails between their legs. Yeah, it's not their tails. Thank you, Meryl. You really, really saved me. Don't worry about it. If you're ever in a bind, you can always rely on me. But you know, please don't think too badly of him, of your ex. When he got back from the battlefront, he was just so happy to see you. But he was just a little too weak and dependent. Yeah, I understand. I think I understand how painful this era is for men. Well, it's a time where both men and women have to drink to get by. Can't take it any other way. Having said that, she knocked back the bottle she was always carrying. You did great too, Leo. Want a drink? Hey now, want a drink, drunk driver? I mean, if we're not going to drive for a while, I wouldn't mind. Just saying. Doesn't seem like the worst kind of thing for me. Lots of new faces around the empo uh, employment agency lately. Seriously, those guys don't know the code for standing in line. Makes me want to kill someone. Like we had a code. <laughs> no, we had a code. There's at least the rule says you can pull someone's clothes, but not their hair. Like you even have hair to be pulled. <laughs> I won't let some uppity kid beat me, damn it. I'll show him a thing or two. As usual, the street of carts was overflowing with its own special kind of vigor. It was filled with uh, poor looking men, day laborers, and low wage war laborers. Complaining wouldn't change anything. However, if complaining gives you even a little more energy for tomorrow, then go for it all you like. This place was filled with those desperate positives. Those desperate positives among the negatives. Lately, Leo had taken a liking to this atmosphere. Cyrus, what a coincidence, meeting you in a place like this. Oh, Leo! You have, any, you have you to eat too? Yep, there are times a man just wants to eat terrible food. Ha <laughs> ha, that's guys for you. If you don't mind uh, being next to me, have a seat. The food here is pretty, ter perfectly terrible. Idiot, if you don't like it, go somewhere else. Cabbage yaki, is it? I like a bit more, bit of this with some terrible drink. Oh, the alcohol here is just awful. You'll get drunk right away. 
Come on, eat up. You guys over there. It's a re repatriation celebration on me. New friends of yours. Looks like they just got back from the war. Uh, we were at a prison camp in Siberia. There were uh, some sick people on the boat. We got quarantined for a while. I only got repatriated a short while back, too. Tokyo must have made, a, made you do a double take, huh? I can't believe it. How can this be Tokyo? Everything's English this, Chinese that. This is Japan. What's wrong with only being able to speak Japanese? Looks like they're all having troubles. Unable to get a decent job. So let's go back to the military or fight over a few jobs in the employment center. Or else go, or else go take an English co language course. What a terrible era it's become. Yeah, that's the worst option. Fucking, would you rather do fucking shitty military labor and then possibly get shot if we ever go into a war? I don't know, take an English class. We could just employ them at Primavera. Right now we don't have any bodyguards except our little group, right? These kinds of people, hell no. They're 100% motivated by money. If someone else offers even a penny more, they're fucking gone. We used to have a bunch of them. We just couldn't get uh, them all settled down, that's all. I see. So they couldn't listen to what women told them to do. Oh, also they're fucking sexist, but yeah, sure. The guys who came back from the battlefield are a rough bunch. They might be used to be used to a stern-faced sergeant yelling at them, but being managed by women ain't something they're used to. Get over it. Weren't you a ser demon sergeant, uh, sergeant yourself? I've heard the rumors. Yeah, during the war, I've got no desire to look over a runt bu uh, over a runt buff n bunch. Now that the war is over. Anyway, I'm Richard's bodyguard. I drop by Primavera now and then, but not every day. Without some stern-faced person glaring at them, well, they become pretty useless. Uh, well, they become pretty useless, don't they? You got it. They get more and more worn out, turning into problems that just drink and get drunk and make pro trouble with other customers. And then Alfred got his bunch, and his bunch got involved on top of that. They just got scared and got bribed and gave up. Yeah, I mean, what else are they gonna do? Men are fundamentally soldiers. If someone doesn't give strict orders, they just let themselves go to waste. Yep, to bring men together, you need a man with a presence about him. There's no one like that in Primavera. Wayne isn't that sort. I'd pass on that. I'd pass on that too. Oh, you have it there. <laughs> there you have it. Which means, Demon Sergeant, here that you're the man for the job after all. I'm Richard's friend. I'm a bodyguard, so I can help him. It might not look it, but working for him keeps you busy. I may not look it, look it, but office work keeps me busy. Take a look at these calluses on, calluses on my fingers. Typewriter did that to me. <laughs> you can employ people there and send you to Primavera. <laughs> sure, if that suspicious Richard ever finds someone he can trust. Yeah, he does trust you. That's pretty impressive. Oh, well. We've been friends for a long time, after all. Most of the people who come back from the war were thrown out into an unrecognizable Tokyo. Without any friends or family. In other words, no one trusts them. That does seem to be the case. Yeah, it's uh, surprisingly harsh. I was fortunate enough to be trusted by Rose. Thanks to that, I'm able to eat for now. However, all those others who weren't fortunate are trusted by no one. So they can't get jobs. Well, Americans only trust Americans, and the Chinese only trust the Chinese. In that case, won't it take the Japanese to trust the Japanese? There aren't any Japanese people rich enough to employ others. All I can do is buy a meal for the war buddies I meet like this. The war was meaningless, but at least having war buddies isn't so bad. That's right. War buddies are family. No one who remained here can understand that hell. That's why we fellow war buddies have to help each other out like this. War buddies are family. 
Even you must have had some friends who fought with you on some battlefront, right? Well, maybe. Public order being bad and the depressing, poor atmosphere. It's all because there's no jobs. Well, the jobs are out there. The Japanese just turned them down. Only the Japanese language were English or Chinese. Exactly. When our ancestors inherited their culture from the Chinese, why the hell didn't they make their language Chinese too? If the Sea of Japan didn't exist, and this was just another part of the mainland, a country called Japan might not even exist. And we'd all be Chinese, Chinese in the first place. Chinese sure have it good. Their spirit of aiding their countrymen really is impressive. <laughs> Make sure you don't try picking a uh, fight with the Chinese man in Chinatown. <laughs> You'll be surrounded by the Chinese mafia and thrown in some rice field. Fried rice. In the same way, it's best not to pick a fight with an American. That's right, the American army moves fast when it comes to protecting their people. Yeah. So if someone picks a fight with a Japanese person in Tokyo, who's going to get revenge? <laughs> That's what happens when you're a member of a sixth class, war-losing country. If you hit a dog, you'll get an animal rights group after you, but no one complains if you hit a Japanese person. Anyway, there's a lot of people out there who are unsatisfied. People that are joining together and calling themselves war buddy groups. At first, they're pretty much vigilante groups, but they quickly start ro roping off their turf and demanding fees, turning mafia. And at the top of the list of groups talk uh, taking those people in and expanding their influence is that pack of Alfreds. Yeah, but we fucking took the head off. Rumor has it that Alfred's been beat up by some guys and sent to the hospital. Sounds like the other mafia have started fighting over supremacy in City 23 now that crazy Alfred's away. True, I mean, there will be a power vacuum. If the feuds get bigger, Mafia will, hiring will shoot up too. That's it, and the city will get more dangerous. If our luck had been just a bit worse, Alfred might have been our boss. Sounds like he's been treating his underlings lavishly. Might not be so bad to have him as an employer. <laughs> yeah, but I get treated with hot girls, so it's like whatever. Would you rather have money and no cute girls, or money and a lot of cute girls? I'll take the latter. And you really did help us that other day. We were able to find the lieutenant safe too. Come on, don't be so stiff. If anything happens in the future, just ask. We're friends who bo who've both eat army food. So war buddies have it good. Are good to have. Thanks. That's right, we war buddies have to help each other out. When we came back to our country after fighting with our lives on the line, just who was here waiting for us? No one, that's who. No one would accept us. Nowhere to work, sometimes nowhere to sleep. That's right, no one would accept us when we return from the battle lines. That's why we've gotta help each other, and that's why I'll help a war buddy like you without conditions. So in the same way, if you see a war buddy suffering somewhere, help him out. Yeah, yeah, we'll never abandon our war buddies. The bond of fighting together is our pride. That's right, men. Our bond as war buddies lasts a long time, a lifetime. Can't wait until this guy becomes an enemy. Yeah. And we'll never abandon the war buddy. Except when we do. Shishigami, don't misunderstand. This isn't about anything that happened on the battlefield. It's just about helping each other in the future. We're here right now. This, is, this isn't the battlefield anymore. We just have to help each other here. Don't you have anything you've left forgot? Don't you have anything have anything you've left forgotten on the battlefield? I do, just like you. However, even if you forget, no one will think badly of you. In fact, if it's painful, then just go ahead and forget about it. I realize a lot of us have gotten a new start and taken new English names, just so they can forget. Barnaboshi Bushi was filled with all repatriated soldiers. It might have be seen as a shady bar where rowdy people gathered, but if you listen to their conversations, it'd change your impression considerably. Don't know where my wife's or daughter wives or my daughter's graves are. 
place my house used to be is a public restroom now. At least you could find the place. With all the streets and everything moving around, I don't have a clue where my house was. But even if we don't know, this place is our homeland. That's right, this is Japan. It's the Japan all those dead ones wanted to come back to so much. That's right, no matter how much the scenery's changed, the dirt's still the same. We've laid foot on the dirt of our homeland. That alone makes us lucky. Can you really call it a homeland if there's no one waiting for you there? We've all lost our families. All of us are all alone. I mean, this kind of touches on like a fairly decent point of like what makes something a homeland, what makes something your home, it, like what is a country? Like even if you lose a war, if you become a different country. Like, is your country still the same? It might look different, it might change, but as long as the ideas of what you hold deep inside, there are people around you that hold the same feelings, it doesn't really change that much. So, I mean, you just have to make you make do. Like, if you don't have a family, you gotta get one. Gotta group up together, be together. And that's what makes us family. All of us war buddies are family. Like, this stuff isn't the bad part. It's just when they start, like, complaining about, you know, the other shit. That's right, we won't abandon our war buddies. We're family. It was a damn shitty war, and we've got so many brothers. Isn't that enough? Oh. You could see rough men desperately encouraging each other over every, uh, each other everywhere. While they were off to war, the great, the great disaster destroyed all, and the rapid development known as reconstruction covered all the traces of their homeland. There was no one waiting for them back at home. No one to welcome them back. No one needed them or employed them. They were just sad men who could do nothing but bask in alcohol and encourage their fellow war buddies. Even though it's much better than it used to be. At first, they weren't, weren't able to accept their, change, their changed homeland. They'd shut themselves away and then get violent. I understand how they feel. They would believe that this was once a working class district of Tokyo with its old, good old charm. Still, we've got to accept it sooner or later. Yeah, there's not much you can do about it. Being able to hold your war buddy's shoulder, cry together, and encourage each other makes that possible. I'm an optimist, so my worrying never got that serious. Still, drinking here with you guys makes the burden feel a little bit lighter. And that's how it is. Oh, that's right. Rumor has it that a lot of men were released from a prison camp in Siberia. Sounds like the shift of them bringing them back up in Niga Niigata? Poor guys. If they came back to Tokyo too, their eyes will pop. Even though they've finally come back, there's no home or family to welcome them. I mean, they might still have a family, theoretically speaking. At the repatriation office, they've just told- they've just got told to re-enroll again. Enroll again. This time in the American Army. I'd like to accept people like that myself. Your responsibility as an officer? No. It's because the war inside me hasn't ended yet. Even now, I'm the leader of those rowdy troops. It's my responsibility to see that they don't end up wandering the streets. I'd like to help them with jobs, too. And I'd like to gather money to help our war buddies who are missing arms and legs that can't work. And a lot more besides. If they've come back with tears streaming down their face, then I'd like they'll be the one that will who will welcome them. You guys fought well. You did well to make it back here. That's what I'd like to say. It's an admirable thing. Admirable thing. Compared to that eye. I don't know what kind of baptism you received uh, on what sort of battlefield. Still, there's one thing I can tell you. What? The only person who can end your war is you. I can't abandon my responsibility as their leader, because of that, my war will continue. Maybe the day will come when it's okay for me to let go of that responsibility. Until that day, I'm a leader for these troops. My war. It's a long ways away. A long ways away from this Japan. What's wrong, Shijigami? Heading back already? Sorry if my talk's gotten you down. 
It isn't like that. I'll be back, war buddy. Go whenever you like, Shishigami. Our battlefields might have been different, but we're, we're war buddies who fought together. I'm glad I got to meet you, Kiriji. By taking the name Leo, I was trying to forget my old self. But I can't forget. I'll never forget. Those people who spoke uh, of their future near the blue sky, under the blue sky, covered with sweat, but with their eyes clear and hopeful. I wonder how they're doing. Let's nice try, Leo Shishigami. The person who showed them those dreams and then betrayed them was you. Only you. You didn't betray him. My war will continue. I mean, just... I'm assuming he means, like, losing means he betrayed him, but I mean, you didn't betray him, dude. You just... It was no, you're never gonna win. Even surrounded by this nighttime city, with shining lights, it won't end. The city was overflowing with unemployed people back from the war. Of course, that wasn't a good wasn't good for public safety. Yes, that makes a lot of sense to me. It is inevitable that Japanese men would drift into the criminal underworld and form mafias. Humans are at their worst when they have nothing to do. No matter how low the pay might be, they're at their worst in an environment where they cannot work. But during the fierce reconstruction of that time, weren't emergency funds poured into Japan? Oh, right. Language. That's right, the fact that they could only speak Japanese made the Japanese people feel outcast from those reconstruction funds. Both Americans and the Chinese, no, all the peoples of the world, will not trust people they can't communicate with using language. That's true. That's really true. So naturally, naturally the occupying forces also placed orders for reconstruction projects with people whose language they could understand. Then they could repeatedly pass their jobs on, finally using the, the Japanese as low-wage day laborers. So for the Japanese, learning foreign languages became very urgent. Learning a language is no easy task. You need to undertake a high level of education for a considerable period, without having to worry about money for food or clothing. I mean, if you just grab some books or something, you could probably learn it. Look, I mean, fucking children learn how to speak English and shit. So, I mean, for an adult, it should be easy. It was necessary for children, but adults didn't have that freedom. So what is it that the Japanese adults of that period needed? Employers who would trust, who could trust them. And unfortunately, people like that were nowhere near to be found at the time, except in the criminal underworld. Mount Rose began to worry more and more. Why are so many Japanese people living in misery? Before she had been uh, never considered it at all, but upon becoming madam, she gradually started to think. No, perhaps it was directly because she had a sense of responsibility, double that of a normal person. What could she do in this city 23? No, in this age. <laughs> 